Would you like to expand your vocabulary with advanced expressions? Well, that's exactly what we'll do in this one hour English lesson. You're going to learn all the advanced expressions with the word as. As far as, as much as, such as, as such, and many more. Let's get started. First, let's talk about how to use the structure as, adjective as. This is an advanced structure that will help you sound very fluent. This is a very common structure. And we use this structure when you're comparing two things. So when I say two things, we need two nouns. And they can be any nouns. And we're comparing them using an adjective or an adverb. Now, we use as, adjective as, when the two things that you're comparing are equal. Let's take a look at an example. Now, first of all, we need two things. So let's just take a look at two houses. I could say that this house is as big as this house. So in this example sentence, what's my adjective? Write the adjective down in the comments, okay? What's the adjective? Big, of course. Big is our adjective. Now remember, we use the structure when the two items are comparable. But what if they aren't comparable? What about these two houses? Now, in this case, I can simply make my verb negative. So let's take a look at our original sentence. So remember, this was our original sentence when the houses were comparable. Now, they're not. So what would I need to change in this sentence to make it negative? Hmm, put your answer in the comments. I hope you know this one. I'm sure you do. So I would simply need to take my verb and make that negative. And in this case, I'm using the verb to be. So I would say this house isn't as big as that house. So in positive form, you're using the structure when two things are equal, but you can still use this when two things are not equal, but you need to make the verb negative. Let's take a look at another example. So I need two things. I'm going to use two cars. I can say this BMW is as fast as this Lexus. So here, what's my adjective? Put it in the comments. What's the adjective? Fast. Now, of course, we can use any adjective we want. So let's think of some other examples of adjectives. What other adjective could you use instead of fast? Hmm, what do you think? Anything come to mind? Put an example in the comments. Think of another adjective you could use. Well, I could talk about money and say that this BMW is as expensive. Expensive is the adjective that deals with money. This BMW is as expensive as this Lexus. Perhaps I could say this BMW is as nice as this Lexus. So what adjective did you use in the comments? Now, of course, if these two cars are not comparable in terms of speed, then I can simply make our verb negative and I can say this BMW isn't as fast as this Lexus. And again, I can use any adjective. All right, so now it's your turn to practice. I'm going to give you two images and I want you to form a positive sentence using as, adjective, as. So here are your two gardens, gardens. Now what sentence could you use? This garden, mm, this garden. So take your time, as much time as you need, think about an adjective and put it in the comments below. Make sure you do this, you need to practice this. Did you get it in the comments? 
So of course, the first adjective that came to my mind was beautiful. We could also have pretty, colorful, lush, well-maintained, and maybe some other adjectives. So I'm looking forward to seeing what you had in the comments. Now, as a final exercise, I want you to take your example and make it negative, okay? That should be pretty easy for you by now. So using beautiful, I would simply say, this garden isn't as beautiful as that garden. Now, I wanted to make this video because in a previous lesson, I covered as much as. And in the comments, I noticed that there were some questions or that there was some confusion and students were using as much as when they should have been using as adjective as. For example, let's take at this comment from my awesome student, Buddha. Now, Buddha wrote this example, but had a couple question marks at the end. So Buddha wasn't sure. And it's good that you guessed or that you weren't sure because there is something a little bit off about this comment. So Buddha said, you are beautiful as much as me. Hmm. Now here, we definitely need the as adjective as. We use as much as when we're comparing to amounts. But in that case, with as much as, there isn't an adjective involved. You're simply dealing with the verb, okay? So you can review that video on as much as. But here in Buddha's comment, how can we take this comment and change it so it's grammatically correct using as adjective as? So, hmm, take as much time as you need and then put your answer in the comments. So, were you able to correct Buddha's comment here? The correct comment would be, you're as beautiful as me. You're as beautiful as me. Because we need to use our as adjective as structure in this case. Now, of course, we could make this negative, but I'm not going to because that wouldn't be a very nice thing to say, so I don't wanna make it negative. Awesome job. Now, before we move on, you can go to my website and download this free speaking guide where I share six tips on how to speak English fluently and confidently. I'll leave the link in the description and in the comment section as well. Now, let's move on and talk about as far as and you'll learn two different ways you can use this expression. It means to the degree or to the extent, okay? Now, this will make more sense if we just look at an example sentence because it's really hard to explain something based on a definition. So let's take a look at a natural example that uses this expression. Here we go, stranger things which is the name of a TV show, if you didn't know. So that's the name of a TV show, Stranger Things, okay? Stranger Things is Netflix's most watched TV show, as far as we know. Now notice how they put, as far as we know, in brackets at the very end of this. So they're saying, to the extent that we know, to the degree, that we know, we believe this to be true, okay? So they're saying, we believe based on everything we know. We believe that Stranger Things is Netflix's most watched show. However, I want you to notice that by using as far as we know, they're letting you know that this statement is only based on the information or evidence, statistics, data, that they have available. They're letting you know that there's a chance, there's a chance, although, you know, small, but there's still a chance that there could be another show that is actually more watched than Stranger Things. So by using, as far as we know, it's like they're giving themselves the opportunity to be wrong. If someone else comes and says, actually, 
Game of Thrones is Netflix's most watched show. And they give you the data, the information, the evidence, the statistics to prove that. Then they would say, oh, okay, we believe you. Because their statement was only based on as far as they know. Now you'll notice here they put this expression right at the end in brackets, almost like an afterthought. But let me give you some examples of the most common way that you can use this in your speech. And this is going to sound very fluent, very advanced, and very natural as well. As far as I'm concerned, we use this to express our opinion. So you say, as far as I'm concerned, there's a comma, so take a little pause. As far as I'm concerned, Stranger Things is the best show on Netflix. So after this expression, you simply state your opinion. So let's stop right here and practice this. So think about what your opinion could be after, as far as I'm concerned, it could be any opinion, anything that you think, okay? So pause the video if you need, think of one, and then put it in the comments. As far as I'm concerned, and then put it in the comments, okay? And again, by using this, you're letting the person know that this is just based on your opinion. You're not stating a universal fact. There could definitely be a different opinion or there could definitely be information available that goes against what you just said. Now, in addition to as far as I'm concerned, we have some other expressions that you can use in exactly the same way. So you could also say, as far as I know, just like our original example, remember there was as far as we know. So you can definitely change the subject, as far as they know, as far as my boss knows. So think about different subjects as well. As far as we know, and then same thing, add the information. As far as I can tell, and as far as I can remember and then state your information. So these are used in exactly the same way. As far as I'm concerned is the most common, followed by as far as I know. So before we move on to the second meaning, make sure you pause and put your example in the comments. You really need to practice this before we move on. So take the time and put it in the comments. Okay. Now let's talk about meaning number two. This is a completely different meaning, okay? And we use as far as to talk about distance, physical distance, okay? Now, as far as, you can think of it as the maximum point, okay? But what you need to know is that it includes the entire area from your original point to the maximum point, the farthest point, and it includes everything in that area would be as far as in terms of distance. So again, it's easiest to understand this when you see a real world example. So let's take a look at this example. 4.5 magnitude earthquake shakes Bay Area felt as far as South Bay. Okay, so to be honest, I don't know where the Bay Area is and I don't know where South Bay is. That's not really important if you know where these places are on a map. But we have two places, right? Our starting point is, where's our starting point? Put it in the comments, Bay Area, okay? So this earthquake was felt in the Bay Area and these other cities, other cities, other cities, other cities, other cities, all the way to the furthest point, which was, what's that furthest point? South Bay. So that's the furthest point. And it includes all of the cities or bays, all the bays from the Bay Area to South Bay. I don't think you're going to use this too much in your daily vocabulary. I can't really think of the last time 
I use this in my vocabulary, although I use as far as I'm concerned, as far as I know, all the time. So that one is definitely going to be in your vocabulary. But regardless, I want you to get comfortable with this meaning as well. So to give you an example, I could say, I walked as far as the mall. I walked as far as the mall. So here, what's my end point? What's my farthest point? Put it in the comments. I walked as far as the mall. What's the farthest point? Put it in the comments. It's the mall, right? I walked as far as the mall. Now, we don't know where my beginning point was. Let's assume it's home. So it means I walk from home, walk, 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 and I stop at the mall. I didn't go any further. I walked as far as the mall. So remember, you're using as far as and then a location to identify the maximum location, the farthest location. So now it's time to practice this one. So think, you need an ending point, a location, a maximum location. Now, to make it simple, maybe it could be we drove, we walked, we took the train, or we saw, you know, you could see as far as. So, hmm, we swam as far as, hmm. So think about something like that and then put your example in the comments, okay? Pause the video if you need, take your time with this. It might not come instantly, because like I said, this isn't the most common structure. I don't really use it in my vocabulary, to be honest. So don't worry if it takes you a little longer to think of an example. When you have one, put it in the comments. Now let's talk about how to use two advanced expressions, as if, and as though. Now, in terms of difference between the two, there is no difference, so you can use them interchangeably. They have the same meaning. With that said, as if is a lot more common. So if you had to choose between using one, I would recommend as if. The examples I give you are all going to use as if because it sounds way more natural to me and I don't really use as though in my speech. So I recommend using as if, but you can absolutely use as though and it has the same meaning. So as if and as though are conjunctions. We use them in two different ways. The first is when it's an unreal comparison. So the important thing to keep in mind here is this is a impossible situation. It's a hypothetical situation. So because of that, we're going to use the subjunctive verb tense. I could say he acted as if he were the CEO. So here in this sentence, he were the CEO. Notice were, that's the subjunctive verb tense because in a past simple sentence, I would simply say he was the CEO, but that means it was real. It's in the past simple, so it's over, the action is complete, but at a time in the past, in reality, he was the CEO. But in my example, he acted as if he were the CEO. This is an unreal comparison. I'm comparing him to the CEO, but he is not the CEO. Because of that, I'm using the past simple in the first part of the sentence. I'm using as if as the conjunction. And then after as if I need a clause. So just a subject, a verb, and an object, but that verb should be in the past subjunctive. So just make sure that verb to be is in were for all the subjects. I could say I acted as if I were the CEO, but because I used as if I were, you know that I'm not the CEO. It's an unreal comparison. Now, another common way we use as if and as though is for a situation that seems likely or seems possible. In this case, we're not using the subjunctive because there is a possibility that it can be real. 
So because of that, we're just going to use different verb tenses depending on the context and where we are on our timeline. So I could say, you look as if you haven't slept in days. So here, you haven't slept in days. That's in the present perfect because it started in the past and it continues until now. And I'm using as if to suggest that although this seems possible, it seems likely, I'm not 100% sure that it's true. So there is some doubt to the statement. You might reply back and say, no, actually, I've been sleeping fine. Now, in this use only, when we're using it for something that seems likely or possible, but we're not 100% true, native speakers commonly use like. You look like you haven't slept in days. And honestly, for me, it sounds a lot more natural to use like. I used as if because that's the purpose of this video, but in an everyday conversation with friends or coworkers, I would use like. So to summarize, as if and as though have the same meaning. They're both conjunctions. However, as if is a lot more common and I recommend using it to sound more natural. They're used for two different reasons. The first is a unreal comparison. You have to use the past simple and the past subjunctive verb tense. And the second time you can use this is when you're suggesting that something seems likely or possible, but you're not 100% sure. And in this case, you can use any verb tense depending on the context. And you can also substitute as if for like. Now let's talk about how to use two must know expressions, as soon as and as long as. You'll learn what these expressions mean and how to use them in grammatically correct speech. Let's start with as soon as. You can think of this as a time reference, okay? We're talking about time. And as soon as, you can translate that to immediately after, okay? Immediately after something happens. For example, call your mother as soon as you get home. Okay, so remember, we can think of as soon as, as immediately after. So immediately after you get home, call your mother. So imagine you're walking home, you open your door, you enter your house, okay? Immediately after. So the first thing you're going to do when you get home is call your mother. Call your mother as soon as you get home. Now, it's important to keep in mind that the structure of this is flexible. I can use as soon as to start the sentence and I can say as soon as you get home. As soon as you get home, call your mother. And they mean exactly the same thing. Another example, Send me that report as soon as you get the numbers. So immediately after you get the numbers, what are you going to do? You're going to send me the report. Send me the report as soon as you get the numbers. And remember, we can switch the sentence structure as well. So write in the comments below, what would be the alternative way to write this starting with as soon as. So pause the video and write that in the comments below to practice. Did you get it? As soon as you get the numbers. As soon as you get the numbers, send me the report. Now let's talk about as long as. As long as and as soon as are very different. The only thing they share is that they both have as and as, okay? But they're used very differently. Now, with as long as, we're offering a condition, okay? This will make sense with an example sentence. So let me give you an example. I'll go to the party as long as you give me a ride, okay? So there's a condition, right? I will only go to the party if you give me a ride. If you don't give me a ride, I won't go to the party. 
That's the condition. So we use as long as for identifying a condition. I'll go to the party as long as you give me a ride. Now, just like with as soon as, this sentence structure is flexible as well. So think about this, hit pause, and change the sentence structure so we begin with as long as, okay? Put your answer in the comments below. Did you get it? As long as you give me a ride, I'll go to the party. Another example, I'll help you with that report as long as you buy me lunch. So my offer to help you is conditional and I'll only help you if, what? If you buy me lunch, right? That's the as long as, as long as you buy me lunch. I'll help you with that report as long as you buy me lunch. Now again, think about changing that sentence structure, hit pause and write the alternative sentence structure in the comments below. Did you get it? As long as you buy me lunch, I'll help you with that report. To summarize, we have two great conjunctions. As soon as, which you can think of immediately after something, and we have as long as, which is used to offer a condition. All right, now you know how to use as soon as and as long as confidently. Now you practice. Make sure you write one example with as soon as and one example with as long as in the comments below. And then change that to the other sentence structure so you get comfortable with both of them. Now let's talk about how to use as well as. This is not the same as the word and. And this is where I, I see a lot of students and even sometimes some native English speakers make mistakes and it's the context okay it's the context that you use this expression that has to make sense and many sentences you would just use and rather than as well as so just keep that in mind as i'm explaining this to you so as well as what does this mean you can think of this to mean as not only Y, but also X, okay? Not only, but also. So in that case, it doesn't just mean and. And just means and. As well as means not only, but also. And because of that, because it has this more specific usage, when you use this is going to be way more limited than when you simply just say and, okay? Now, let's look at the structure here. To form this, we would have X as well as Y, okay? So we would need to put information in for X and Y. But remember my explanation, I said not only Y, but also X, okay? The order of that is important because we're saying not only Y, so this item, whatever Y is, but also X, and we're emphasizing X. That's the important thing. We're emphasizing X, and X is the one that comes first. Now, I promise this is going to make sense when you see it in an example. So let's take a look at an example. I could say, we're accepting applications from Harvard as well as Princeton. Okay, so think about this. From Harvard as well as Princeton. So we have X and Y, right? What's X? Put it in the comments. What's X? The one that comes first. Harvard is X and what's Y? Put it in the comments. What's Y? Y equals Princeton. The second one is Y. In this case, X, Harvard, Y, Princeton, okay? So not only Y, not only Princeton, but also Harvard, but also X. And remember, which one are we emphasizing? Let me know in the comments. Are we emphasizing X, Harvard, 
or are we emphasizing why? Princeton. Hmm. Put it in the comments. Emphasizing which one? X or Y? Put it in the comments. We're emphasizing X. We're emphasizing Harvard. We're emphasizing the first one. And that's the important thing because I could say we're accepting applications from Harvard and Princeton. I could simply use and, okay? But the meaning is slightly different, slightly different, but an important distinction. When we use and, we see those, the X and the Y, we see them as equal, equal in terms of importance, okay? But when we use as well as, we're emphasizing X for whatever reason. So that's an important distinction. That's why I said at the beginning that in many cases, you're just going to use and. You're going to mention two items that you do and they're going to have equal importance, okay? Now, using our same example, why, the thing that comes at the end, can be plural. And in many cases, it will be plural, okay? So I could say, we're accepting applications from Harvard, X, that's still Harvard. We're accepting applications from Harvard as well as other universities. So other universities, why? That's plural. And remember, it's like saying not only are we accepting applications from other universities, but we're also accepting applications from Harvard with emphasis on Harvard. So in both these examples, the one where I had a singular Princeton and then plural other universities, we're emphasizing Harvard in both of those examples. So now it's your turn to practice in the comments. I want you to form a sentence using as well as. Remember, we need, in terms of structure, we need X as well as Y. And remember, it means not only Y, but also X with emphasis on X, right? So put an example sentence in the comments. Now, after you do that, and honestly, this will probably take you a little while to think of the correct context that you need for that. Now, after that, I also want you to just put a simple sentence using and, okay, so X and Y. And there's going to be equal emphasis on X and Y. And I want you to do that so you can really see them side by side, see as well as, and see and side by side and understand how they're not the same thing. And you can't use them interchangeably. And remember, like I said at the beginning, most likely you're going to form sentences with and. That's going to be way more commonly used in your daily vocabulary than as well as. Honestly, I don't remember the last time I really formed a sentence with as well as. So and is going to be very much a part of your daily vocabulary where I don't think that as well as will be. But still, it's great to understand this distinction. Even if you don't use as well as very often, most likely you're going to see it being used, especially in a more academic style of writing. And in that case, you can understand how it isn't the same as and. So for me, some simple sentences I could say with and would simply be, I like, and then you name two things, or I want, and then you can name two things. Or I bought, and then you can name two things, right? I like singing and dancing. I want a coffee and a croissant. I bought a shirt and a sweater. Now taking one of those examples, I could say the sweater I bought was beautiful as well as comfortable. So here, remember, not only Y, comfortable, but also X, with emphasis on the X, okay? So really get comfortable with seeing and, and as well as side by side. Now let's talk about how to use the structure as much as. I see lots of mistakes with this structure, so pay close attention. 
You can use as much as when you have two different things and you want to say that those two things are equal in amount or degree. Let's take a look at an example sentence. I deserve that promotion as much as she does. As you can see in this example, we have two different things and we're talking about amount. The amount that I deserve the promotion and what's the other amount? The amount that she deserves the promotion, okay? So let's say the amount that she deserves the promotion is this much. Now, if I want to use as much as, remember, it's equal. So she deserves the promotion this much, I deserve the promotion this much, it's equal. I deserve the promotion as much as she does. Let me give you another example and then I'll get you to try your own example sentence. Okay, I could say that Jose participated in the conference as much as Maria did. Okay, so here we have amount of participation or the degree to which Maria participated and Jose participated. But you might just want to think of them in terms of amount. So Jose participated in the conference this much, I can't really make it different in sizes, this much, and Maria participated in the conference this much. They're equal. Let me give you one more example, and I'll make it an easy example that everyone can understand. You ate as much cake as I did. Okay, so we have the amount of cake that you ate, the amount of cake that I ate, and they are equal, right? Now, look at the sentence structure. What do you notice that's a little bit different here? Hmm, you ate as much cake as I did. So notice here I've added in the something. So ate is a verb, right? But if I wanna specify ate what? If I wanna add the something, look at the placement here. As much mm, something, as, okay? So that's when you're including a noun. And the purpose of that just would be to specify ate what. I could leave out cake. I can leave that something out and I could simply say, I ate as much as you did. Now, the only difference here is that I'm specifying cake, right? But if cake is on the table, it's obvious based on context that we're talking about cake. I don't necessarily need to include that in the sentence, but I wanted you to be aware of that sentence structure when we include a something. So now you know how to use the first meaning of as much as. And remember, we have two things and they are equal in amount or degree. So now it's your turn to practice. I want you to think of an example using as much as and put your example in the comments. I think you can have a lot of fun thinking of an example for this one. So put your example in the comments. Did you get it in the comments? Okay, great. Now let's move on to meaning number two. As much as in our second meaning, you can think of it more in terms of although, regardless of or despite how much. That probably doesn't give you much information, does it? So as always, it's easier to just see this in an example. I could say, as much as I want to stay, I have to go. Notice here, as much as is at the very beginning of our sentence, okay? As much as I want to stay, I have to go. Now, you can think of this as although. Although I want to stay, I have to go. Now, what does this mean? Basically, we can think of them as two individual sentences. I want to stay, I have to go. 
Okay, those are two individual sentences. And then we're just combining them together using as much as at the very beginning. There's an easy way that this will make sense for you. And that's by using but. You're most likely familiar with but is one of the first transition words that students learn. So you can think of this as I want to stay, but I have to go. That could be one way that you combine these two sentences into one using the transition word but, okay? And notice there's a contrast here. I want to stay. That's a positive, right? I have to go. That's a negative. So when we use but, there's always a positive and a negative. Now, we're using as much as in exactly the same way is simply the sentence structure that's changing here. So remember, we're using as much as at the very beginning of the sentence. As much as I want to stay, comma, I have to go. Another example, as much as I'd love to help you, I can't. Now, this is a very common way that we may decline to do something politely. I'm letting you know, I want to help you, I can't help you. So we have that contrast, right? A positive, I want to help you, but then we have a negative, I can't help you. So we could combine those sentences with but, I want to help you, but I can't. That might be a, the more familiar structure to you. So this is just an alternative way to form that. And I'll be honest, it does sound more advanced using this structure. Now remember, as much as at the very beginning. As much as I want to help you, I can't. So when you hear as much as, you know that there's going to be a contrast. So when someone says, as much as I want to help you, even if they don't say the end part, I know they're not going to help me because that's how we use as much as is with a contrast. So just keep that in mind. It can be a polite way to decline doing something. For example, you could use it as a polite way to decline an invitation to a party. Your friend invites you to a party and you can say, as much as I'd love to go, I can't. So as much as I'd love to, that's the positive, right? I want to go to the party. But then the negative is, I can't, I'm busy, I have to work, I have a deadline, I don't have a way to get there, whatever the reason is. As much as I'd love to go, I can't. So that could be a polite way to decline an invitation. So now you try, try using this advanced structure where you need a contrast, okay? And remember that placement as much as is going to be at the very beginning. So pause the video now if you need, think of your example and then leave it in the comments. This is definitely an advanced structure that's going to make you sound very fluent and very advanced in English. So you need to practice this and I'm really excited to read your example in the comments. So make sure you take the time to put your example in the comments so you remember how to use this structure. Now let's talk about how to use regarded as and considered. First, let's take a look at these two examples. She's regarded as an expert. She's considered an expert. Both of these examples have the exact same meaning. There's no difference at all. And both of them are just used to say you have an opinion on a topic or there's a general consensus on a topic. So when we say she's regarded as an expert, she's considered an expert, we're saying the general consensus is she's an expert. Most people have the opinion that she's an expert. That's what it means. So a very simple meaning, it's a nice advanced expression that you can use to sound more advanced in your speech. But what do you notice about the sentence structure? Well, you might notice that in the first one, we have regarded as. We're using as. She's regarded as an expert. 
But then with considered, we don't have as. She's considered an expert. So there's that difference in sentence structure. Now this is actually a mistake that many native speakers make. Many na native speakers will say she's considered as an expert. But you don't need to do that because considered is not a verb that requires as. So there's no reason to include it at all. But remember, you will hear native speakers use it from time to time. My recommendation to you is don't use it because it's not required and it sounds more awkward to have it but you need to use it with regarded as. You cannot say she's regarded an expert. That sounds very awkward. It's mandatory to have as. She's regarded as an expert. Now, one thing you can do with considered is you can use the verb to be. She's considered to be an expert, now this is grammatically correct, but it isn't necessary. You don't need to use the verb to be. You can just use considered and then the opinion. You state the opinion, an expert. She's considered an expert. So that would be my recommendation to you. So let's look at an example I saw on Youglish using regarded as. But gossip, celebrity gossip, it's regarded as a distraction. So notice here, we have our opinion, celebrity gossip is a distraction. So you can simply make a statement like that. It sounds more affirmative, like you're stating a fact. So if you want to make it sound like it's not a fact, it's an opinion held by many people, it's the general consensus, then you can use regarded as. Celebrity gossip is regarded as a distraction. Many people think that. Many people have the opinion. Now let's look at an example on Youglish using considered. Node.js is considered fast, thanks mostly to Chrome's V8 engine. So notice here, we don't say considered as fast, Although remember, I said probably about 10 to 20% of native speakers will just use as because they probably are thinking about regarded as and they just use the same pattern, but you don't need it. And it sounds better without it because the verb does not require as grammatically. So there's no point using it. Node.js, which I have no idea what that is, some sort of programming language, I'm going to assume. Do you know what Node.js is? You can let me know in the comments. I don't even know if I'm saying it correctly. <laughs> Node.js is considered fast. So remember, I can make a statement and just say Node.js is fast, but then it sounds like it's a fact. It's fast 100% of the time. But if I just wanna make it sound like it's an opinion, it's what most people think, it's the general consensus, then I can use considered. Node.js is considered fast. Remember, you can add that optional to be. It's considered to be fast, but again, it isn't required, so it's, cleaner, it's simpler, it's best to just say considered and then the something is considered fast. But remember, regarded as and considered have the exact same meaning. So you can definitely use them interchangeably, but you just have to make sure you have the sentence structure correct. So I could say celebrity gossip is considered a distraction, or I could say node.js is regarded as fast. It doesn't matter which one you use, but just make sure you get the sentence structure when you use each one. So now it's your turn to practice. I want you to leave two examples, one with regarded as and one with considered in the comments below. Now let's talk about how to use as such and such as, they don't have the same meaning. So such as, this is really easy one. This is used to introduce an example. 
For example, I could say the store sells many electronics. Now I want to give examples. I want to give examples of the electronics. So that's when I can use such as, such as, and then here are my specific examples. The store sells many electronics such as phones, computers, and speakers. So that's a really easy to understand way how to use such as, and as you can imagine, you'll get lots of practice with this because it's very common to list examples when you're making statements. Before we go on, just notice that in writing, you need a comma here. And that comma is just there for grammar purposes. But in spoken English, we verbalize commas with pauses. So you want to take a slight pause before you give your examples. The store has many electronics, such as phones, computers, and speakers. So make sure you get your comma there. Now let's look at another example. Many countries such as Canada have four seasons. Here, this one, don't get confused because what do you notice here? We have the verb have, right? Now you might be thinking, but Jennifer, Canada is singular. It would be conjugated as it. It have, that's not right. You can't say that, right? That would be grammatically incorrect. It have four seasons. No, <laughs> you can't say that at all. What do you have to say? It has four seasons, right? That would be how you say this grammatically. But here's the thing. Let me put a little check mark there. <laughs> okay, but here's the thing. In this example, have is not being conjugated with Canada. That's not what it's being conjugated with. So who knows, what is it being conjugated with? Well, our subject is many countries. And what does that represent as a subject? I, you, he, she, it, we, they, which one? It's of course, they. Many countries, they, have. So that's why we're using have. Now, this might confuse you because I didn't put any commas here, but you can imagine all of this information is considered separate because when information is in commas, it's considered optional. You could just get rid of it, right? Like look at our example above. The store sells many electronics. I could just end it with a period right here and the sentence entirely. So the information after the comma is not required. So this information such as Canada is not what our verb is being conjugated with. Our verb is being conjugated with countries. So that's a really important note. Even when you don't have commas, you still have to ask yourself, what's my subject? And that will tell you how to conjugate your verb. Now, if you're wondering, the comma is optional with one example. To be honest, I would add commas. I think commas just look nicer in writing and it helps you understand the idea better. With the commas, a native speaker would know that this have is being conjugated with they. But even without a comma, I think a native speaker might make this grammar mistake as well because they would see Canada and assume that's the subject. But if there's commas there, then you understand that the information is additional. So it's optional. I would use it, but I didn't just because I wanted you to see this example. If you have two or more examples, then the commas are required. So just keep that in mind. Of course, the commas are for written English, but remember they are verbalized as pauses in spoken English. So remember, it's simply used to introduce an example. Now you can think of it as the same as saying like. For example, many countries like Canada have four seasons. 
So notice here, I said like instead of such as. Many countries like Canada have four seasons. Our rule with the conjugation is exactly the same. Such as, you consider this more formal. It's more common in writing. If you use like in writing, it's a little too casual, to be honest, in writing specifically. If you're writing to your friends, that's fine. But if you're writing for any sort of professional reasons, it's better to use such as because it is more formal. In spoken English, though, this is where things are different because in spoken English, we prefer prefer a more casual conversational tone, even if you're giving a formal presentation in spoken English. So it is more casual, but it's more common in speaking because that's what we prefer in spoken English. We prefer a more conversational, casual tone. So now let's talk about as such. I'll be honest, this one is a little more advanced, so take your time with it. You may need to review this a few times as well. As such, you can think of it as being what is indicated. I know that probably doesn't tell you anything, doesn't tell me much either. Being what is indicated, don't worry, it will make sense once we review the examples. But what you need to know is that it represents a noun that was previously mentioned. This is extremely important. And that, the noun, that's the being. And what is indicated is just what is already mentioned, okay? So that's kind of what it means. It's just a noun that was previously mentioned. So let's take a look at this. I'm an English teacher, true story. I'm an English teacher and as such, I notice a lot of mistakes native speakers make, not students, native speakers make. I'm an English, I'm an English teacher. Woo, it's a tongue twister. I'm an English teacher. And as such, I notice a lot of mistakes native speakers make. Now, what does this as such represent? Hmm. Well, remember, it's a noun that was previously mentioned. What's the noun that was previously mentioned? An English teacher, okay? So you can think of such just as the noun. As such, it equals as an English teacher. That's exactly what it means, okay? So that's the easiest way to think of it. Whenever you wanna use as such, just ask yourself, what's the noun? that was already mentioned. And then you just add as in front of that noun, and then you replace the noun with the words such. That's what you're doing. You're keeping as, and you're replacing the noun with such. Now, I could say I'm an English teacher. And as an English teacher, I notice a lot of mistakes native speakers make. This is grammatically correct, but what do you think about this sentence? I don't know about you, but I don't like the sentence very much because it's repetitive. It makes the sentence so long. And what's the point of repeating your noun twice? You just don't have to do that. It's repetitive and there's a better way to say it. And what we do is we just replace our noun with such. But remember, we need to keep the as. So we keep the as and then we replace the noun with such. Since this is a more advanced expression, let's look at another example. He's the former president. And as such, he has a security detail 24-7. A security detail is just a security team. The word detail, it just means team. I don't know why. It's just the language that they use in the security world. Now, here, we have as such. What does such represent? Do you know? Well, it represents the noun, right? So ask yourself, where's my noun? the former president as the former president. That's what such represents. So here we go. As such, 
as the former president. Again, I could definitely say he's the former president and as the former president, he has a security detail 24 seven. Yes, this is grammatically correct, but it's repetitive and there's a better way to say it. And that's to use as such. So you're only going to use as such when you have the noun mentioned and you want to use the noun again. Because of that, it's a pretty distinct way and it's not one that you're going to use every single day. It's probably a less common option, especially compared to such as, which is extremely common. So such as is extremely common because it's very common to give examples as such is not as common simply because it's not common to have your noun and then immediately say your noun again, right? Now there are different sentence structures with as such. So let's just review the three sentence structures here. You can say, just like I did before, he's the former president and as such, he has a security detail 24 seven. So notice the placement it's in between, but also notice there's commas before and after. And what do we do with those commas in spoken English? We take pauses. He's the former president and as such, he has a security detail 24 seven. It tells us to take a pause in spoken English. Now you can also just create two sentences. He's the former president, period. That's a complete sentence. Now I'm going to begin my sentence with as such. You could use and as such, but starting a sentence with and is a little more casual and you don't really need it. So it would be better just to get rid of it. He's the former president as such, but notice this comma is mandatory as such. He has a security detail 24 seven. Now, one final sentence structure option, which isn't as common, but I wanted to include it is having as such at the very end. This isn't as common, but you may see it. He's the former president and has a security detail 24 seven as such. Remember, this is just saying as the former president and has a security detail 24 seven as the former president as such. So this one isn't as common, but you may see it. So here's the summary of everything we just covered. I wanted you to see them side by side on the same screen. So go ahead and take a screenshot of this now, or if you're a little more old school, you can hit pause and write this down with a pen and piece of paper. If you're going to take a screenshot, let me give you a nice smile here since I'm in the picture. So go ahead, take your screenshot, hit pause if you need. And here's your summary of how to use such as and as such. Amazing job with this lesson. Now leave some example sentences in the comments below to practice your new expressions and keep learning with this lesson right here. I know you'll love it. And make sure you download your free speaking guide where I share six tips on how to speak English fluently and confidently. You can get it from my website right here. Now get started with your next lesson.